I saw it on live now. All right, this is Professor Parker. Welcome to All This Math. And right now, I wanted to kind of take it back to some of the fundamentals. Some of the fundamentals, because fundamentals are key, right? Just knowing how to round numbers. Like, real talk, just knowing how to round numbers. Like, you know, even, even though sometimes we get into the trigonometry, we get into the pre-calculus concepts, we may get into the calculus concepts, we may get into the advanced algebra two, we may solve systems of equations, but sometimes we need to remember or reflect on the fundamentals because a lot of the times people have issues with the later math topics and later math subjects because they never fully grasp these fundamentals just rounding how to round numbers and this is a skill that you can use like when you're in the grocery store or when you're you know conducting some type of transaction involving money we need to know how to round all right so we can make approximations so we can make estimations that are valid right so we don't get shortchanged in real life situations because nobody wants to get hustled. Nobody wants to get shortchanged, right? All right, so we got three examples up here. Round 2.496 to the nearest hundredth. Then we slide over here. Round 1.6 to the nearest tenth. And then down here we have round 12.39 to the nearest tenth also. All right? Wait, did that write that correctly? 1.6 to the nearest tenth. No, I wrote that wrong. This should be round 1.6 to the nearest whole number. That's what this should say. Right, now, now we're good. Now we're ready to go. Ready to rock and roll now. All right, the first example. First example. Whenever you're rounding, there's a step-by-step -step process. And you should instill in your children to follow this step-by-step -step process whenever they need to round any number, right? They first need to understand place value. They need to understand the ones place, which is right here. They need to understand that numbers to the left, you have the tens place, then the hundreds place, then the thousands place, then the ten thousands place. I'm sorry I don't have a better number that, you know, includes all of those different places to the left, but just work with me. Imagine. You know, you got ones place, tens place, hundreds place, thousands place, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, so on, right? But to the right of the decimal point, you have the tenths place, right? That's the tenths, then the hundredths with that th at the end, right? Tenth, hundredth, thousandth, right? Then you have ten thousandth, then you have hundred thousandth, then you have millionth, then you have ten millionth, and so on and so on, all right? So the first thing you have to do is you have to recognize, okay, your place value. Then you look at the problem, you look at the instructions, and you say, okay, I'm rounding. What am I rounding to? I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth. So first I find the hundredths place, right? So there's a TH at the end. So I'm going to the right of the decimal point. I know that's the tenths place, and this is the hundredths place, right? So I'm doing something with this place right here. This is, this is the place right here that's really important. All right. Now, the first, the next step is to say, okay, what number is to the right of that nine? Because nine is in the hundredths place. But what number is to the right of that nine? Not to the left, but to the right. I look at the number. I say, I see a six. Okay. Now, there's a six to the right. Now, here's the here's the little rule that you wanna wanna remember. Five and above, give it a shove. Four and below, let it go. Five and above, give it a shove. Four and below, let it go. What does that mean, though? What that means is if this number right here to the right of the number in the place you try, you're worried about, the hundredths place, this number to the right, if it's five or above, that means this number, you're going to give it a shove. If it was four or below, you would just let it go. Now, here's what you don't do. You never, don't let your brain play tricks on you because it actually seems logical that if this number is five or above, then I make this number go up. So it will make us, we would sometimes think that, oh, well, if it's less than five, then I should make this number go down and it should become an eight. Don't fall for that. That's not actually what should happen. What you do is you just leave it alone. You leave it as a nine. In this particular example, this number six right here is bigger than five. So that means, what did I say? Five and above, give it a shove, right? This nine is gonna go up. But here's the problem though. Out of all the digits, nine is the biggest single digit. So that means the next number that nine will become would be actually be a 10. 
So if that happens, now you got to go over to the next place. I know we're trying to round to the nearest hundredth, but that's going to make us have to go over to the next place. And we got to do something with this four. This is like a special case. That's why I wanted to give this example tonight, right? So that's going to make this become, so the four, we got to give this four a shove, right? Because the nine went up, right? So that's going to become, the two is still the same. And then we have point, the four goes up to five, right? But I'm going to just write a zero here because we are talking about the hundredths place. So I'm going to put a digit in the hundredths place. So that would be this number rounded to the nearest hundredth. And remember our steps. We first, we identify the place, the place value that we want, right? That's the place value, right? And in, this, in that case, it's a nine. Then we look to the number to the right of it. Asada, are you paying attention to this? Cool. Because you're going to need to know this too. All right? So we got uh, a six to the right. And again, remember the rule. Five and above, give it a shove. Four and below, let it go. Right? Just let it chill. Just, just leave it as it is. If it's four and below. This is a six though. That's bigger than five. So that means we're going to give the nine a shove. But in this particular scenario, because nine is the biggest single digit, if we shove the nine, it's going to turn into a 10. So because this nine turns into a 10, we can't have a 10 in, we can't have a 10 in a single digit place. So that means that it's going to affect this four and make this four turn into a five, basically. So that's going to become 2.50. So that's the answer for the first one. And we're going to do the same steps with each of these examples. So the next two examples the same way. So we want to now round 1.6 to the nearest whole number. Now when we say whole number, we're talking about the left side of the decimal point. So a whole number meaning the ones place. Whole number meaning the ones place. Not the tens place, not the hundreds place, not the thousands place, the ones place. So here's the ones place right here. Now, first thing we, next thing we do, not the first thing, but the next thing we do is we look to the right of the one. What number or what digit is to the right of the one? I see a six. Okay, remember the rule. Five and above, give it a shove. Four and below, let it go. Six, just like we had here, we had a six. Six is bigger than five. So we're going to shove this one, and one's going to go up. And the next digit after one is two. So one becomes a two, and we're rounded to the nearest whole number. So we just leave that as two. Now, here's a common mistake that some students might make. They might say, oh, well, yeah. I understand I got to make this one into a two, but my answer is I'm going to still have a two. I'm going to just be 2.6. Nah, you don't do that. You're rounding to the nearest whole number. That's not even a whole number. That includes a decimal. The whole purpose is to get rid of the six because you want to have a number that stops at the ones place. That's what you want. You want to have a number that stops at the ones place. Like in this example, this number originally stopped at the thousandths place, but we wanted to round to the nearest hundredth. Because one of the purposes of rounding is we want to shorten the number. We want to shorten the number without sacrificing too much of the value of the number. We, but we want to shorten it. So if I was to, like, this was to the thousandths place, and now it's only to the hundredths place. It had three spaces after the decimal point. Now it only has two spaces after the decimal point, right? So now, over here in this example, we, are one, we had 1.6. We had one number after the decimal point. It was, all the way to, it was to the tenths place. But now we want to round it to the whole number. So we don't want nothing after the decimal point. So we just need two. And that's the nearest whole number. Two. That's it. All right. And we keep, but we keep following those steps. All right. We just keep following those same steps. And actually what I should do, not in this video, but in another video, I'm going to have like a, you know, a written set of steps that students can just refer to every time. And they can just look at, it'll be there on a piece of paper. They can write it down. And every time they're doing rounding, they just refer to the paper. Refer to the paper because that's one of the one of the skills and keys to mastering mathematical concepts is that repetition, that repetition, just doing it over and over again, the same correct way over and over again. Or even if you learn different methods and different ways of doing the same types of problems, doing it over and over again in different ways, but doing it correctly, but over and over again, that repetition is key. Right. So now this last example, round 12.39 to the nearest tenth. All right. So we round it to the tenth. So where's the tenths, please? Tenth, hundredth. Boom. Underline that. Now, what number is to the right, or what digit I should say? Because I don't want to, I want I don't want to create confusion by saying number, because the whole thing is a number, right? But this digit is a three. To the right of it is a nine. Right? To the right of it is a nine. Now again, five and above, give it a shove. Four and below, let it go. So, and I should have came up with a, I should have did an example where you do just let it go. 
But, oh well. Maybe next time. So, this 9 is going to make this 3 bump up. So, I'm going to have 12. And the 12 don't change. The decimal point don't change. Only thing that changes is that 3. That 3 changes to a 4. And that's 12.4. That's rounded to the nearest 10. And again, it's not, it's not going to be 12.49. That 9 is gone. That 9 is gone. It got rounded. It's gone now. All right? So just a little bit of rounding because, I, you know, I believe in, you know, just dealing with the fundamentals. And, you know, even if your student is a little older or if they're like elementary school level, ele elementary school age, or they're elementary school age, they might be doing this right now, you know, in their online assignments or in their online schooling, schoolwork packets and whatnot. But, um... Rounding is key. Rounding is a, is a key and essential skill that we should have. And again, like I said, it is very useful and you will have to use it in life, just in general. And um, yeah, since I have it on, shout out to Omar Wiley, Malcolm X. Tomorrow is his birthday. Um, I'll probably talk more about him tomorrow. But um, thank you for tuning in. And please send your children or your own personal, if you're in school and you, you have some, some mathematical questions, Send, your, send pictures of your problems to the All This Math DM inbox. And depending upon the demand, your problem, your particular problem might make it to this board. And we'll talk about it. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.